All right, so this is going to be a video tutorial um, for this wet dry bag. Um, we're going to be making it in a different print, but it's going to be essentially the same bag. Um, this bag has like a feature print and then um, a lining print that I also use to accent this, the double pockets here. This front pocket is fully lined in cotton with this same lining print, um, both behind the pocket as well as against um, the front facing part of the bag. And then the large part pocket is lined with PUL um, for, you know, basically a waterproofing. Um, there's two zip closures and the whole bag it works out to be about 10 and a half by 11 or so. So that's what we're going to make today. Um, the most important thing with this project is not to stress out about the finished project. Um, it's easiest to do sort of in slow stages um, and not get too worried about, you know, how, how the thing's going to come together because it definitely will. We're going to create the whole front pocket first and then attach it to the larger bag as if we're creating one single bag. So um, what you'll need is a sewing machine um, with your thread and bobbin coordinating. You're going to need um, five, five pieces of fabric to start. So um, you're going to need the fabric that you choose for the sort of main feature print of your bag. Um, so this is going to be the entire back as well as the front of the bag. You need two equal pieces of that. For um, the size that we're making, these are um, 11 and a half by 12. But you can make this in any size. It's just important that these pieces of fabric need to be the same size. So then you need, um, in the same size, whatever print um, or fabric you're going to use for your lining of your dry pocket. So this is two pieces of quilter's cotton in this little dot print. Um, that's going to provide the lining for the exterior dry pocket. If you would like to also use this print for that accent on the top right here, you'll need an additional strip for whatever length you want that to be. So I've got one here that's about three inches. Um, it's got some selvage on there, but the zipper should take care of that for us. And then you'll need your wet lining, and this is cut on the fold um, to the same dimensions. So you're ending up with a piece of PUL that is twice the length of the rest of your pieces. This just means we don't have to sew this bottom seam. That's, that's the only reason to do it on the fold. If you don't have, um, say, a piece large enough or whatever, you can certainly cut two additional pieces of PUL to the same dimensions as all the other pieces, um, and you'll just, have to, um, you'll just have to stitch up that opening at the bottom. I like having it on the fold because I think it shifts a little bit less um, and it's just one less thing to worry about lining up, but um, it works just as well either way. So for the time being, you can set your PUL to the side because we're not going to need that until we get to the large section of the bag. You can set one of your um, dry sections to the side, that's going to come in in a couple of minutes. And you can set one of your pieces of feature print to the side that's going to be the back of the bag that's also towards the end with the PUL. All right so if you are and I apologize this is probably going to be sort of upside down for you guys but um, if you are looking at your feature print and you decide it has a direction I'm going to say this is the bottom here um, and this is the top so you guys are looking um, top ways at it and if you do indeed want to use that um, coordinating print as a panel um, between your two zippers, you're going to need to cut your feature fabric so that it makes up the rest of that length. So I'm just, you can measure this and be very precise, of course, if you would like, um, but I'm just going to lay it across and, and cut it. 
I like to use a rotary cutter for this because I think it keeps it a little straighter. Um, but you can certainly cut with scissors. And I'm going to shave off a little bit more of that selvage too. So I'm just going to cut right along that line. A little bit of hangers on there. So then what you're going to end up with is um, a piece of your feature fabric, two pieces of um, one of your feature and one of your coordinating fabric. This smaller section of your feature fabric we're not going to use. Um, we would be using it for the top side of this zipper. If you wanted to do it all with the same print on the front you would just go ahead and use this piece for that. Since we're going to use a coordinating piece um, this dot fabric is going to serve that purpose. So the next thing you need to do is um, make sure that you have a lining piece for the back of this side so that when the bag is open and the zipper is right here, you're getting a nice lining on this side. You're not seeing the raw fabric. And conveniently, those pieces just have to be the same as your front pieces. So I'm just going to lay this print um, right on top of this dot fabric and just cut this same line again. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me a lining for the bottom of the front of the pocket <laughs> and one for the top so that when you unzip your zipper you'll still have a lined um, back to those fabrics. So then the next step is to attach your zipper to this section of the bag. So you can use um, really any length of the zipper that you want as long as it is at, as long as your bag. So it's nice to have them hang over a little bit so that you're, they're not too much in your way. Um, let me see if I can get to the same color here. There we go. So you're going to end up needing two zippers, but for now one of them can go over with your PUL and uh, cotton set aside bag over there. All right. So to attach the zipper, you're going to want to lay your feature fabric that's going to be right side up. Your zipper is going to be teeth side down so that when you open your zipper and the teeth are facing out, you're going to have the correct side uh, facing out there. So you're your feature fabric is right side up, your zipper is teeth side down, and your liner is going to go right side down. And if it helps um, you to pin this, feel free to pin right along this edge, and we're going to stitch that together. Um, there's no real need to have a zipper foot. Certainly, you will get closer to the zipper if you have one. Um, but I am afraid of my zipper foot, so I just use my regular plain old boring foot. So I'll show you how to do that. And if it helps you um, in terms of getting oriented with the, with the direction the fabric is facing here, um, once you pin it, you can kind of open it up and see that when it's all sewn, the teeth are going to be here on this side with the uh, print and the back of the zipper is going to be back here with the lining. So, this is going to be so impossible for you to see. Alright, so hopefully you can see my sewing machine foot there. Something's happening. There we go. Hopefully you can see my sewing machine foot. And it doesn't really matter which way um, the zipper faces for this. I just find it to be convenient to have the fabric away from the center of my sewing machine. Um, and you can 
line this outer edge of your foot of your foot here with the ridge that the zipper makes so you can really feel that um, ridge of the zipper right there and you're just gonna line this section of your foot up with the ridge of that zipper and holding um, holding these layers together as you sew you are just going to straight stitch right down along the zipper and you want the needle position for this to be as close to the zipper teeth as possible on my brother ES2000 that's a zero setting so you just want to be as close to the teeth as possible there and uh, straight stitch down the whole thing and as I go I'm using my finger to um, mostly just to reassure myself that the zipper teeth are really right up against that foot and it's not sliding out of the seam And you'll give it a back stitch at the end and your first zipper is attached all right so now we are at the zipper attached stage of the game here um, so we've got our feature fabric and our lining fabric attached to the bottom of the front of the pocket um, on the front of our bag. So the next thing we're going to do is um, fold those out so that they're in the appropriate configuration here with the lining in the back and the um, print in the front. And we are going to top stitch right along this edge here. So that's going to hold the fabric away from the teeth of the zipper um, so that it doesn't get caught you know up in the zipper and, and break your zipper um, and it also just looks really nice and polished so you want to have a coordinating thread for this since you will see it I find it easiest just to do the whole project with the coordinating thread but that's obviously up to you so back to the machine the same thing you're gonna set your foot down and this time you're gonna use the inside I know it's so you're gonna use the um, other side of your foot there to guide the seam or guide the stitching um, because you want this fabric even though it's not particularly bulky it's easier if it's on the outside of the machine you still want your needle though as close to the teeth of a zipper as you can get it so I'm going to change to a number one which just centers the um, needle rather than having it um, over to the left and you're just going to straight stitch down this line so now you've got this front of this pocket all clean and ready it's gonna stay out of your way when you're sewing the rest of the stuff on so um, then we're gonna put the top of the zipper on so it's really the same process um, you're gonna use those little strips that we made this guy's got some kind of hanger on there um, so you're going to use um, one of them to is gonna be your your front so you're gonna put that right side up imagining there's no fabric here you're gonna do the same thing place your zipper teeth side down and you want um, the fabric to be lined up here on the edge if you're off by a couple millimeters it's really not gonna make that much of a difference but um, you don't want to be off by too much because you'll end up losing size in terms of if having to cut down um, of the size of your bag and then this is a little long so I'm just trimming off these fuzzies um, so then this is gonna function as your lining piece so you're just gonna place that right side down so that when you open it up it matches your bottom and you're gonna sew a straight stitch the same way we did before right down the zipper resetting your needle so that you are as close to the teeth of the zipper as your needle can get in the foot that you're using 
uh, which I would just recommend using a normal foot. I think it's fine. So I'm resetting my needle to a zero and we're just gonna straight stitch this line. So now that's attached, you're gonna wanna open it up so the wrong sides face each other and you're gonna, gonna start to look like a real pocket. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna top stitch this line here, resetting your needle so that it's as close to the zipper as you can get it. And you're just gonna top stitch those two together. All right. So now you've got what is a recognizable looking pocket. Um, the next thing we're going to need to do is attach the final piece of the dry pocket lining to this. So what we're creating is the entire outside pocket as a standalone piece. So that's going to prevent you from having to worry too much about lining everything up, about making sure that everything's pinned perfectly, about wondering if something underneath has shifted. So in order to keep us from having to worry about that, we are going to attach the two, uh, the zipper compartment that we just made to the lining um, piece that is still waiting. So what you've got is a lining piece here. You should have already cut this out um, and it should be sitting there waiting ready for you. And then you've got your zipper pocket that you just created. These should be about the same size. So um, the zipper itself should make up for the seam allowance um, that we use to attach it. So you should be dealing with basically the same size pieces still. If not, no big deal. Just trim them up so they're the same. The next thing you're going to want to do is put your zipper to the inside of this shape. We're going to stitch all the way around this whole shape here, all the way around to attach it together. Um, and you don't want your zipper to be on the outside of that stitch line because then you'll have to cut it open and fix your zipper. And so I like to just place a pin to hold the zipper together. This is really just to hold this pocket together so it's easier to attach to the rest of the bag. So we're going to... Um, just top stitch as close as you can to the edge. I like to go sort of back stitch a little backwards and forwards over the zipper just to make sure that that's secure all the way around the edge. Um, and <clears throat> with your uh, back piece of lining here facing right side up and your total front piece here also right side up so that if you were to open the zipper you would be seeing the right side of the lining. So you want this to look just like a, a finished pocket on the front of a bag. And you can start anywhere you want here in terms of um, sewing this together. You just wanna make sure that you're catching all the edges. Um, because this is going to hold this pocket for you while you sew the complete bag. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around as close as I can to the edge um, and come back. All right, so when you get here to where the open section of the zipper is, you are just going to, assuming it's a, a plastic coil zipper here, you can just stitch right over that. You do kind of want to go a little slower. You don't want to smack your needle into the teeth of the zipper. If you have a metal um, toothed zipper, you can use your hand crank to slowly go over that. It should, um, it should sort of find its way through the teeth. Um, just make sure that you're using your hand crank so you're not pounding your zipper into or your needle into the zipper. All right, so you've gotten past that, so you're just going to continue the rest of the way around. All right, so once you have um, completed the little stitch all the way around the pocket here, you have a whole front pocket. So this should open. You should see the lining on the inside here. You should see the lining facing up here. Um, so you have one whole standalone pocket. 
The next thing I would recommend is following your stitch line. It's probably easier to see on the lighter fabric there. Um, following your stitch line, including along the zippers, you want to remove as much of this excess fabric as you can because we're going to attach this to the main section of the bag and you're not going to want to see any of this stitch. So you want to bring that edge of the fabric in close to that stitch um, so that it will be sort of like wrapped up in your seam allowance when you create the rest of the bag. So I'm just going to do that. You should be able to trim your zipper with your rotary cutter. Um, if not, you can just trim your zipper with the with a pair of scissors. Um, my rotary cutter is getting a little sad. And because we have this, I hope you can see that, because we have this um, back stitch right here over the zipper, we're not going to risk that coming apart. Um, unless you're really, really rough with your projects while you're making them, you're probably not going to risk that anyways. Um, but it does kind of give you the security that the zipper pull is not just going to fling off the edge of your project. And this also helps keep the, you know, do I have everything in the seam? Is it all lined up? Question sort of under control because you know that this is going to be all the same length, all in one layer, and ready to be attached to the full bag. So that one went a little crazy. And see how I went a little wavy and I ended up cutting off my stitches there? It doesn't matter. This is all going to get wrapped up into the one seam that closes the bag. So as long as this is holding together and I can kind of manipulate it easily um, without it coming apart, it's going to be good to go. So then if you have missed any threads, um, you can trim those off. Um, I like to lint roll it. <laughs> It just helps me make sure that I'm not, nothing sitting and laying behind. So that's your front pocket. Now we're going to need to assemble the main pocket of the bag. So from hence forward, you are going to treat this as if it is a single piece of outer fabric. So first you're going to get your backer fabric. This is going to be that same feature print. This is going to be the back side. All right, so I had to chase the cat off. You're gonna get your feature print here. This is gonna be the back of your bag, um, right side up. Then just like before, we're gonna lay our zipper with the teeth facing down, right on the top edge. So this this is the pocket that's gonna be lined with PUL. So you're gonna need to get that double, so double length uh, section of PUL that you cut earlier and lay that right side being the shiny side, right side down towards your zipper. Now I tend to cut the PUL just a hair smaller um, because it's a little bulky and I think it fills up the bag nicer if it's just a teensy bit smaller than the rest. Um, and I do recommend that you pin this along the zipper because the PUL will tend to shift around. Um, Stuff is seriously just falling off the walls. I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> so you're going to pin those three layers. Your back fabric facing up. Your zipper teeth down. And your lining right side down. Now you can make this with any combination of fabrics. It doesn't certainly doesn't have to be PUL. Um, just with the thought of having a wet dry bag, um, this is going to be your your wet compartment. But you could line this with any anything. You could line it with the same cotton lining as the other um, section. You could really do whatever you wanted. Um, but with this being a wet bag, um, PUL is going to provide that protection from moisture. So reorientate ourselves here. 
Oh my. And you're gonna do the same process as before. You're just gonna straight stitch with the zipper set as close to the, um, I'm sorry, the needle set as close to the teeth of the zipper as you can. And you're just gonna straight stitch along with that zipper ridge uh, providing a guide for you. All right, now that that's attached, you're gonna do the same thing as before. You're gonna open it up so your zipper is sort of pointed up out of the fabric and you're gonna top stitch that together. The PUL can be a little funky to top stitch so um, I recommend just holding it from underneath every, every once in a while, every inch or so um, and just making sure that it is extended out this way towards the, away from the zipper um, so you don't get like a big bubble of PUL that you know covers up your zipper teeth. The cotton is pretty cooperative, cooperative, but the PUL is not so much. So, so we're just gonna stitch right down with the needle set as close to the zipper teeth as your machine will let it. Okay, so once that's top stitched, you have the back of your bag with the zipper attached, top stitched with the PUL um, on the inside. So now we're gonna need to attach the front of the bag. So this is the piece that we just finished finished making. We are going to treat this as, as if it were one piece of, of outer fabric here. So um, we're going to lay this piece right side up, just like we have done with all of the zipper attachments so far. We are going to lay this piece, the zipper. We can pretend there's nothing attached if it helps us feel better. Um, we're going to lay the zipper teeth side down. And then because we have the um, double length cut on the fold section of PUL, um, we are gonna be able just to fold the PUL up and that is automatically going to lay it in the correct orientation with the right side down towards the back of the zipper. And again, I would definitely recommend pinning this because you've got a lot of layers here um, and you wanna make sure that the PUL doesn't shift on you too much. Straight stitch that down, again, with, this, with the uh, needle as close as you can get it to the teeth of the zipper, and you'll be able to feel that zipper ridge. So just use that as your guide against the outside of your sewing machine foot to help you keep um, the stitches straight and keep the zipper sandwiched in there. All right, so now you have finished sewing on the final zipper. Hooray! And you'll be able to open it now with the PUL as like a ring. You'll be able to see that pattern of those two zip closures. So now what I would recommend is go ahead and unzip your zipper completely because we're gonna have to top stitch this and we want all this mess as much out of the way as we can get it. So. Your PUL is going to twist underneath here because it's all attached. It's going to feel a little bulky and awkward, but all you need to worry about is this top stitch right here. So back to the machine and definitely recommend all of that bulk to the outside. Put your foot down with the, I hope you can see any of this with the um, foot right against the edge of the teeth. I think it's just out of frame there, I'm sorry. Um, and the same thing with just coaxing the PUL into the right position by holding it underneath here. Um, and you're just going to set your needles closest to the zipper teeth and straight stitch um, right down to give yourself a nice top stitch. And you do have, this is the fullest sort of seam um, in the bag. There's a lot of layers in this seam. You've just doubled over the whole front pocket and the PUL. So take your time and hand crank if you need to and just go straight down this edge.
All right, so that is attached. You've got your whole front pocket here top stitched. You've got a pocket and then you've got the PUL on the inside. So the final thing is to finish the bag. So what you're gonna need to do, and let me see if I can orient this at all for you. So you've it kind of comes off the machine like this, where the backer and the PUL is bunched up and this is all tidy. Definitely recommend re-zipping your zipper about halfway at this point. That's gonna help your bag sort of hold its shape as you, um, as you stitch it up. So, we're getting all kinds of cat activity. It's very exciting. Um, so, once you've re-zipped that halfway, you're looking at your bag like this. It's basically um, right side out, and you're going to need to turn it inside out. But fortunately, all you really have to do is take that bottom of the PUL, pull it out, and you're going to get this long rectangular shape where the where the outside pieces of your bag are touching and the inside PUL is touching. Now, you want your zipper, the teeth of your zipper, to point in towards the lining of the bag. What this does is this, that's what makes this sort of like little folded corner if you pointed your zipper up towards the towards the front half of your bag where your cotton is, you're gonna end up with a raw edge of a zipper sticking out here. So you want your zipper, when you sew your bag together and it's in this long configuration, you want the teeth of your zipper to point towards the PUL. So you just wanna line those up as best as you can. And I like to stick a pin in there so that I know it's not shifting around too much. And if you have a clip or whatever, this would be a great place to use the clip because there's a lot of fabric right there, but you do wanna put something there so that um, you're not shifting too much. And then the same thing on the other edge of the zipper. This is gonna be the closed edge of your zipper, so it takes a little bit of coaxing to get it to fold to where the teeth are down inside the PUL, but you basically are gonna, you know, sort of fold your zipper in half with the teeth pointed towards the PUL. And stick a pin in that one as well. Now, you can just go ahead and stitch like this. You can put um, pins in if it makes you feel more comfortable. Um, but basically, you're gonna start on one of the bottom edges of the PUL skip some space here so that you can um, turn the whole bag um, because obviously it's inside out and if we stitch it all up there'd be no way to get it right side out and you're going to start about halfway down and stitch all the way around you're going to go over the zippers give it some a couple of back and forths over the zippers to give it some extra stability um, if your zipper on the inside is closed here like mine is give it a couple inches so it stays out of the way of your foot of your presser foot and you are going to stitch all the way around. Good quarter of an inch seam allowance um, is fine here. You can also switch to um, another thread color if you want. Um, I typically do that uh, when I'm ready to close up the PUL hole because that shows, but this isn't really going to show too much. So you can stick with whatever, whatever thread color you find is going to make you feel comfortable. So, a little back stitch, and then we're just going to go all the way around. Now, I'd really like to show you, here we go, when we get to the zipper. So, you're going to want to definitely slow way down. I like to catch some of the zipper in the needle before I remove the pin because I just want to prevent any shifting and you can really think of this it's hard to get your brain around it but you can think of it just as one big rectangle um, because you don't really need to do anything particularly special you're just stitching around in a big rectangle giving your zipper a little extra reinforcement 
and carrying on with the cotton. All right, so when you're nearing the end here, we've got this folded um, section of the PUL. If you had two pieces of PUL, you would just keep on going right to the next corner. Um, but since we don't, we're just gonna stitch right off to the edge here to make sure that bottom is closed. So, We've got a little extra stuff over here. We've got the extra zipper. There's a little bit of a large seam allowance over here for the PUL. So I am just going to trim those down to somewhere in the quarter of an inch range. Um, you could pink this if you wanted to. Um, it would be really nice, but nobody's ever gonna see it. So you can also just cut it with normal scissors. If you have a lot of bulk left from the um, front pocket, and you can see here these two lines of stitching, the outer line is how is where we um, tacked that front pocket together. So if you have a lot sticking out from there, you can trim it back. Um, the inside seam is going to hold everything together. So I just tend to like to square it up with if there's any outer fabric um, hanging over, but. Then you can also go ahead and clip the edges just to keep some of the bulk out of the corner. Um, this isn't going to be a bag with real sharp corners because PUL just isn't going to, you know, it's just not going to facilitate that. So, um, but you can get some of the bulk out of there if you want and then cut off the edges to both your scissors. Now you're going to reach in here. You're going to hunt <laughs> along this seam for the opening that you left in your zipper and you are going to start to turn the bag through that opening. This is like the exciting part. All right, so your PUL is gonna need to stay out, so it's as if um, the lining is, is untucked, but the bag should be basically the right way around. You're going to dig in here for the corners and pull those out. And if it helps, I like to use like the end of a wooden spoon or something. Um, I'll just use the ruler, but you can go in through the pocket that you left in the lining and get something in there to help you find the corners. So just going to get those corners poked out. Like I said, they're not going to be real crisp and they don't need to be. Um, but you do want to make sure that you have the shape of the bag um, ready out here. Now, if you want to press it, this is the point to, to do it when the lining, when the PUL is on the exterior of the bag. So if you're going to press your bag, if it's gotten wrinkled or you need to press it or you want to press it, do it now because if you try and press it with the lining inside, you're going to melt the polyurethane um, that's laminated onto here. So um, you'll end up with, you know, your lining fused to itself or holes in your lining because it's not going to withstand the heat that the cotton will. So if you want to press it, do it now. Um, now you're just going to need to close the opening in the PUL. So I do like to switch to a coordinating thread here for whatever color PUL I'm working with. So this is just white. So hopefully I have a white bobbin made up somewhere. So the white thread is loaded at long last and, um, we are going to turn the raw edges inside of this PUL lining. So you're just going to tuck them inside and pinch this closed. You can, again, you can pin this if you want, but it's not really necessary. Um, so pinching it and kind of stretching it will help hold that together. Then I like to go from the top down so that I know, <laughs> so that I know where the seam ends. Um, so you are just going to top stitch this opening closed. And once you have done that, you are going to trim your threads would be nice, Katie. And 
invert that lining into the bag and that's it you're done you finished it you did it you put on more than one zipper onto one thing it's not so bad so this is what you're left with you get the little corners poked out on the inside and you have a fantastic wet dry bag so you've got your dry pocket on the outside that we fully lined it looks beautiful and your fully lined pul pocket for anything soiled and it's all ready to go and you made it aren't you so proud Ooh. <laughs> thanks so much bye, -bye.